Hey guys, how's it going? So I got the blower parts for the, um, the PB200 Echo Blower, and I got a, or an intake gasket, which for this blower is part number 130010-20560, and I also got a gasket and diaphragm kit, and... That is from Echo. This is the part number one two five three zero three one three three one zero, and I believe this is GND forty one. I think that's a carb kit from Wal or from Zama. So we'll go ahead and start installing the parts. So I'll set you up on the tripod, and then we can start installing the parts. Okay, so over here you can see I've gotten the carburetor mostly apart. Um, so I'll go ahead and start taking, I've got mostly apart, um, got the one side off and cleaned, as you can see. So now I just need to take off the primer bulb, which is right here, and you just take off these two Phillips screws right here, and then that will be where the pump diaphragm is. And that you will take off and clean the area underside there. Make sure all the holes are clean, and you can use like the straw end on your carburetor cleaner. Um, you can use the straw end right there to um, to clean out the little holes and everything. So I'll go ahead and clean out the carburetor, and I'll show you how to do that. So let me set you up on the tripod, and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so I have the um, the carburetor right here in my hand and I'm going to go ahead and take off these two Phillips screws right here that hold the primer roll plate on and if you, I'm not going to be showing you how to do this in this video but if you're replacing the primer bulb then what you'll do is you'll just take off this plate right here and these two screws, taking take it off by taking out these two screws, and then you can replace the primer bulb and just put the plate back over it. And I'll show you how I'll show you how the primer bulb goes on when I have the plate once I'm done put, cleaning the underside here. So these are holding the whole plate on here, and the um, pump diaphragm is part of the primer bulb assembly. So basically, you can just kind of pull the primer bulb sideways and this is the plate right here and the primer bulb just kind of slips through like that like there's the primer bulb and there's the plate and then you just when you want to when you want to put the primer bulb back on you can just slip the primer bulb right through the plate right there so I'll just set that aside. I'll take the primer bulb out and then just give it a little shot of carburetor cleaner. Let me get some safety glasses first. Hold on, let me find some safety glasses and I'll be right back. One more thing I forgot to mention. Um, Whenever you're using solvents like a carburetor cleaner or something like that, or even just like WD-40 or something, um, you want to make sure that you are wearing safety glasses so you don't get it in your eyes. Um, I told I went I stopped the video to get a pair of safety glasses because um, it, you don't want to get the carburetor cleaner in your eyes; it's bad for your eyes. So, just thought I'd mention that. Okay, so I got some safety glasses right there. So I'll go ahead and put them on and give the little um, primer bulb plate a shot of, well, a couple shots of um, carb cleaner. And since these are the old diaphragms, um, they're like really hard. Um, they usually I don't like to get um, get any carburetor cleaner on the diaphragms and gaskets because it um, deteriorates them. So, yeah, that's a very hard 
pump that firm. So now I will just kind of clean up the carburetor a little bit. Um, I'm just doing it on a baking sheet here. And I'll go ahead and zoom in on there so you can see what I'm doing. So here's the um, the uh, the primer bulb plate. And usually I don't like, I'm going to try and keep the primer bulb away because it kind of deteriorates it as well. Just give that a little shot. And I'll also clean the top part of the primer bulb. Wait, can, um, part where? The um, where the arm bulb actually sits on the carburetor. And I'm just using Gum Out small engine carbon choke cleaner. It's jet spray kind. And I'm just cleaning all the holes here, making sure that they're all clean. Just want to make sure all these holes are clean and all the surfaces of the carburetor are clean as well. Now I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, but if you have an ultrasonic cleaner, you can dip the carbur you can put the carburetor down in it for a couple of hours, and that gets it real clean, both on the inside and the outside. Basically, want to make it. Make, you basically want to make sure that it is like there's no dirt at all, because it won't function properly if there is any dirt. So I will go ahead and let that sit for a couple of hours um, and dry out real well. Um, I'll put it on a, a dry rag here. So I'll go ahead and just let that sit for a couple of hours, and then when it is dry, I will come back and show you how to install the new parts. Um, you basically make sure that it's really dry so that the new parts don't deteriorate from the carburetor cleaner. Because they will from... Um, because the carburetor cleaner is very harsh on rubber parts. So, yeah, I'll let that sit for a couple of hours and dry out, and then I will be right back. Okay, so I've let the carburetor sit for a few hours, and it is just about dry, so I'll go ahead and start moving all the parts over to my workbench. Um, it's sit for a while, and it should be good to go so see just a little bit more dirt there I might touch it up a little bit with some more carburetor cleaner so set on uh, the camera tripod here I'll get my safety glasses again and I have a little pip here that I got carbon free that I'll use to clean out the little Gunk I see here. So I'll let this sit for a few more minutes and dry out, and then I will be right back.
Okay, so it sat for a few minutes and dried out. So now I'm ready to rebuild the carburetor. So I'll go ahead and put a clean rag on my little baking sheet here with all the over all the gunk so that it doesn't get in the carburetor again. And there's a little bit more gunk that didn't come off with the carburetor cleaner on the actually what I'm seeing is gummed up ethanol. And that doesn't surprise me really because this boiler is having ethanol problems. So let me go get the parts over here. You can make sure your hands are clean so that you don't get more gunk in, in the carburetor than, it, than there already was. Because then that's pretty much, you pretty much wasted your time doing the repair because you just got gunk in it again so it's clean it. So, I got the carburetor kit opened up. And I will probably do this without gloves because my gloves are dirty. So, just put those off to the side. So, here's the carburetor kit. Um, it's going to come with two gaskets and two diaphragms. So, the two gaskets. Here, I'll show you up close. So, these two gaskets right here, this is the metering diaphragm gasket, which will be on this side right here of the carburetor. Then on this side is where the pump diaphragm goes, along with the, um, with the pump diaphragm, which is this gasket right here. It's going to have these, or this diaphragm right here. It's going to have, it's going to have this little tab here and that little tab there and it's going to look like this. You want to make sure that's okay. And it's going to be made of a plastic resin type material. Then this is your metering diaphragm. Like I said, it goes on this side where the, val the needle valve is because it meters the fuel coming into the carburetor. Then this is your pump diaphragm gasket right here. And this is your metering diaphragm gasket which will be on the other side of the carburetor. So you want to basically line up the and the pump diaphragm. Um, there's some ways to remember this, but the pump diaphragm right here goes on the surface of the carburetor, and then the pump diaphragm gasket goes on. And it's the complete. It's opposite for the metering diaphragm because the gasket for the metering diaphragm goes on first, and then the pump diaphragm. And and then the metering diaphragm will go on. So just kind of you need to remember that because it won't work right if if you don't do it properly. So I'll go ahead and set up the camera and show you how to do this. Okay, so I got my camera set up here, and so you can so you can see what I'm doing. So basically, first what I'll do is do the pump diaphragm side. And I'll just kind of wipe off the surface here. Make sure there's no gunk on it. So first what I'll do is line up the holes here. And that's what the pump diaphragm should look like when you put it on. It should be on the surface of the carburetor. Okay, so I got the pump diaphragm on. Now what I'll do is put the pump diaphragm gasket, which is this one. And you want to line it up so that it's like this. And that's what the pump diaphragm gasket should look like. It should line up properly over here and right here. And then the holes should line up so you don't puncture it with the screws you put back in. So now what we'll want to do, well now what we'll do is put the cover uh, the throttle or the primer bulb cover on, and this is what it looks like right there. And this screw right here is the, the screw right here is the idle adjusting screw. 
basically what you want to do is when you put it on, you want to, um, you want to put the, pull the throttle butterfly lever back a little bit so that the dive, so the, let the little screw that adjusts the throttle, the idle speed can fit properly in there. And you want to make sure that the gasket doesn't move. And just line everything up properly. Line up the gasket, line up the diaphragm. And then pull the butterfly back so that you can get it lined up here. I'll go ahead and um, put this on here and then put a screw in it. Then I'll show you how, how it should look. So next what you want to do, um, this is how it should look. It should just be right on there. And the holes should line up. I'm just holding it so the throttle butterfly doesn't boop, move it out of the way. So now what you want to do is take your primer bulb, which is right here. And then what I've shown you earlier, you're going to stick, here's the primer bulb plate. You're going to stick it through the back side so that it looks like this. And the lip of the primer bulb is on the back side of the bowl. It should look like that, or the, not the bowl, the plate. And then just slide it. There's a little groove that it fits into, the primer bulb fits into. Then just line up the holes on the plate. And then put your screw in and thread it first so you don't strip the threads out. And then what you want to do is just tighten that down a little bit. So hold. Then you put your other screw in. Um, and don't tighten them tighten the first one down completely yet. Because you will want to tighten it evenly so there isn't any air or fuel loops. So Snug that one up. Snug that one up. Then we'll go into actually tightening it down completely. There. So now that side's done. So now we can move on to the other side. Okay, so now you have this side on. Um, now you have the other, the, this side on completely. Now what you will want to do is take your metering diaphragm gasket, then set it over the set it over so it looks like this. Set it over the holes properly, then line it up. And this side here goes on the Go this side here, the disc side, the disc looking side, um, will go down. So that side. And then just line up your hole, all the holes. Then you can put the cover on. And the cover. Takes two screws, and this is what the cover looks like for a Zama carburetor. And that little hole right there is the vent hole, and you just want to kind of slip it into the little clip hole right there. So. I'll just take a screw and thread it in and then tighten it down. Not tighten it down completely, just snug it up. And then take the other screw and thread it into the hole. And then snug it up for the second hole. And 
and I'll just tighten it, that one up, and tighten that one up. And again, this is to tighten it, the cover evenly so that there's no air or fuel leaks. So that's your fully assembled carburetor. Now we'll go over to the blower at the workbench and assemble, put this back on the carburetor with the new, uh, the new intake gasket. So I'll be over at the workbench. Okay guys, so I'm back in my workbench here. Um, and we're going to put our intake gasket on. And if you didn't get the part number earlier from Echo, this is part number 130010-20560. And I'll put a link in the description to where you can find the parts. Um, I ordered these directly from Echo. But you can also order from Repair Clinic or Amazon. Because I checked on Amazon. And they weren't in stock because for some reason, so um, I was unable to order from Amazon, which I usually order parts from actually, because it's quite easy, quite easy to order parts from Amazon. So now we will want to assemble this here. Let's see if, let's see if I can get my camera position here where you can see it at a good angle. There. So I will go ahead and put the, and by the way, the, um, in case you didn't know this, the fuel lines, these brass fuel lines right here, go towards the side over here. So you want, whoops, sorry about that. So first we will take the new intake gasket out of the out of the bag. Now I'll compare it to the old one. It's quite dirty so quite dirty and I found that the um, this is a design flaw in my opinion. Um, the throttle trigger when you when you um, like let's say the throttle's connected when this moves out when the throttle butterfly moves open and opens and closes, it bumps the, it rubs against the intake gasket, and that kind of stresses it out, I believe, so, um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and connect the fuel lines to this, and in case you haven't watched the, I had this in for a repair earlier, oops, sorry about that. I had this in for repair earlier this year, and if you if you haven't watched those videos yet, um, you know that it's a pain in the butt to get these fuel lines on, but since they've been on here for a while now and they're kind of bent the way they should be, um, it's fairly easy to get them on. So, I'll just kind of slip that on there like that. Then we'll take our air cleaner assembly here, which has the choke on it, and it's got the long bolts. We'll get our other bolt over here. I'm sorry about that. Let me find the other bolt in my workbench real quick. Okay, so I got the other bolt. Um, it was under the blower. Um, so basically now what we want to do is connect the throttle trigger first, actually. Um, I'll just go ahead and put these two bolts, or these two long threaded bolts here. I'll just go ahead and put them right in there. And what we want to do next is connect the throttle linkage, which comes from the throttle trigger and the handle. And you want to connect it, it's just got a basic Z-bend makes it easy to put on and you want to line up the holes you want to run the you want to run the um, screws through the through the carburetor and then okay so the throttle trigger fell out of the handle so I'm going to fix that okay so I'm working on getting the handle or the throttle throttle linkage connected back up and to do this 
pretty much have to take the whole handle part so you can hook it back up to where the throttle trigger is. And right now I'm just taking all the screws out. And then you have to take out the two screw, two Allen bolts right here. And get a, a wrench. And my toolbox here. Probably that size. Nope. That one is a little too big. So it's a 760 fourths that these two bolt or these two Allen bolts here are. So I will take these out here and then we'll be able to do the take the whole side off and you'll be able to see. Well, I'm at I'm a air blow. If there's, use the air gun on the air compressor if there's any gunk built, built up in the cylinder cooling, in the cooling fins on the cylinder, which prevents it from cooling properly. Now this, what I'm doing now, is only if the, if the handle, if the throttle linkage falls out like this did, here. So now we'll be able to pull the whole side off here. And there's a little clip the that the um, that the um, the throat the what's it? Sorry, I forgot. Um, that the spark plug lead clips into. And it's easier if you take the spark plug out. So I'll go ahead and take it out. Just kind of slide all this back into place here. And take out the spark plug here. I just use my T handle wrench. And this spark plug I put in about three months ago and it's still pretty good as you can see so I'll just set that off to the side so I'll go ahead and take that out there and you can tell that it's got less compression with the plugs out so I will and when you have the spark plug out, you can see the piston going up and down in the cylinder. So maybe you can on there. You can sort of see it. Um, I'll go ahead and put you back on the tripod here. So now what we need to do is connect the throttle trigger so that, or the throttle linkage rather, so that it fits properly in here. And it goes through the back of the hole here so that when, so I'll just show you how that works there. So here's the where the throttle trigger goes in, or the throttle. Here's the here's the whole throttle trigger assembly. This is the part you'll see 
right here when it, the handle's on. Now when you have this open, this here's the throttle linkage. Um, it's just got a Z-bend on it. So you want to put it through the back there. Maybe you can see that. But you can see it's... You can see the metal part in there. And it'll ju it just sits there, so... We will... Go ahead and put the handle back on, and you want to be careful about not leaving, letting this come out again, because... It's, a, it's extra time to get that back in. And then up here on the top handle, on the top of the handle where the, where the, um, stop switch is, there's just a little groove it fits in, so you can see the groove right there. And the little stop sign thing just kind of slides on top of it. And then the other side here so should fit should fit properly and it has to go around the bottom of the heat shield there and it just kind of slides into place like that now there's the there's the throttle linkage you want to make sure you don't knock that out again so you don't have to do this so I'll go ahead and put all the screws back in there's one right here one right there one right there one right down there and then there's the two right here and right there. So I'll go ahead and put all those in and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I'm putting in the last screw right now. Um, I did it again, so... Because um, I keep forgetting that I can't like hold the throttle trigger here to like, hold the blower while I put screws in or something. So I'll just go ahead and put this last screw in down here. can put the, um, hopefully put the carburetor on without knocking the throttle linkage out of the, out of the le lever right now. So we will take this, which, oops, sorry about that. So we'll take our choke cover, or our air filter box, and then put it through the holes in the Um, carburetor, and these are going to go all the way through the carburetor, the screws. And you put the gasket on, and finally you just put it right on the intake boot here. And put those in. You can push it, push them in as far as they'll go. And then you can take your screwdriver and tighten these down and I'll, t I'll tighten these down and be sure to tighten them evenly again to stopping air leaks which keep the which cause the blower not to run properly so I'll go ahead and tighten these down and then I will be right back Okay, so after messing around with the blower some more, um, I found that it needs to, I think it needs a carburetor adjustment really badly. Um, the red, um, that red screw there, Let's see if it'll focus. So, basically that red screw, right, this red cover right here is the high speed adjustment screw on the um, carburetor. And that adjusts like the, how high the engine, or the, um, it revs. 
so um, after that gets adjusted it will rev higher depending on which way you turn it well when that's not adjusted properly it stalls out which is a um, symptom of not being adjusted properly so I'm going to um, I've tried to get that cover off I don't know if you can see how there's kind of some bite marks on the plastic from using a pair of needle nose pliers so um, pretty much I've tried to get that cover off and it just hasn't wanted to come off um, because there's like a lot of grease and stuff built up in it so I figured I'll try um, I got an ultrasonic cleaner um, you should see a video of that up later today if not soon so um, yeah I will um, I'm going to dip this carburetor into the ultrasonic cleaner and um, see if that fixes the problem of being able to get that off so <clears throat> um, but yeah you'll probably see in a lot more videos rather than using like um, carb cleaner like that you'll probably see me using more of an, doing more ultrasonic cleanings of carburetors because um, I got a I got the um, 2.6 quart ultrasonic cleaner from Harbor Freight today so you'll probably see some videos of that so yeah I just thought I'd finish off this video um, so yeah um, if you have any questions I'll be happy to answer them um, I can't do a demonstration right now because it's like spit and rain um, so I'll probably do a demonstration of the blower probably once I clean it and try adjusting the carburetor then I'll do a demonstration of it but yeah until then um, thanks for watching the video and um, hope this helps for just rebuilding the carburetor um, if you have any questions um, you can leave a comment below so anyways thanks for watching and don't forget to comment rate and subscribe thanks and I'll see you later